What a great day. What a great year. What an exciting time to be a Raging Cajun. This is our winningest year ever. It's easy to say that after that weekend we just had where I still can't believe how unbelievable it was. And yeah, there's an entire list of accolades that I'm going to sit here and I'm going to take a few minutes just to review with you. And I know all of you in the room know it. I just like to say it. All right. Football won the Sun Belt Conference title this year, and of course their third straight RNL Carriers New Orleans Bowl. <clears throat> Men's basketball cap captured the Sun Belt Conference tournament title and danced its way into March Madness for the first time in nine years. <clears throat> Softball captured the Sun Belt Conference regular season and tournament titles, hosted and won the NCAA regionals hosted and won the NCAA Super Regionals, and played tonight in the college, Women's College World Series. <clears throat> okay, that's at 6 o'clock ESPN2. Just saying. <laughs> Baseball became the first Raging Cajun sport to secure number one national ranking. And go ahead, go ahead. It's worth it. In fact, they, uh, they finished the regular season unanimously ranked number one in all five national polls. Baseball also won the Sun Belt Conference regular season and tournament titles, and of course are currently preparing to host the NCAA Regionals tomorrow at the Teague. Great job. And of course, we had, a, we had another championship. Coach Mark Jeffrey and his men's tennis team also won a Sun Belt Conference championship. So let's count that. that. Let's just repeat here real quick. Football, basketball, baseball, softball, tennis. That's five in one year, y'all. That's a great job. <clears throat> I would be remiss if I didn't mention the other sports and their accomplishments, though. Our soccer program had the best year in the history of their program. One goal, one goal shy of winning a Sunbelt Conference championship. So good job, Coach. <clears throat> Women's basketball, you know, if you've gone out and seen the, the women's basketball program and the turnaround that Coach Broadhead is leading, they had their best year since the 06, 07 campaign. And I think, again, everyone who's seen them play knows they're about one player away from being really special. So that's a great job, Coach. Our golf program won the uh, uh, Hall Intercollegiate, Comp uh, Intercollegiate Invitational and they finished in the top five eight times this season. And at the end of a season, 12 tournaments, they were one putt, one putt away from going to the NCAA tournament as an at-large participant. So good job, Coach. Our women's tennis program beat uh, Western Kentucky in the conference tournament before they got knocked out by the team that ended up winning it all. And our track program continues to excel uh, right uh, in the, excuse me, in the uh, indoor season. Justin Victor was uh, named All-American in that weight throw. And uh, our head coach is with some of our participants right now at the outdoor season. With a little luck, 10 days from now, we'll have our second All-American in track. So again, that's all our sports. <laughs> what a great season every single one of them had. <clears throat> You know, more importantly, the Raging Cajuns won another championship announced by the Sun Belt last week. At a banquet attended by Dr. Savo and myself, Coach Marlin, Coach Broadhead, and Coach Hudspeth, our student athletes were recognized for having the highest graduation rate in the state and the Sun Belt Conference. That was great. <clears throat> But to be honest with you, the tone of the year was really set long before the first title in December. It was set last summer. The tone started the great year off with you, our fans. You broke the all-time football season uh, ticket sales record in August. That was an important win to kick off the year. Coach Hudsmith wants to make Cajun Field the toughest place in America to play. You are making this a reality. And the year finished great. Just uh, last week, you proved it again when Lamson Park was sold out for the Super Regional. And it, believe me, it was sold out, not because there was nothing to do in this town. <laughs> I can't believe that. But anyway, and I have no doubt the Teague will be sold out here this weekend when we host the uh, Baseball Regionals. You are our foundation. 
Because of you, I always say it's a great day to be a Raging Cajun, and it's true. You give us momentum, we are not stopping. We together, we're going to continue to fight on. Think about it for a minute. We have done so much with so little. There are many teams with larger budgets and bigger reputations that we've beaten this year. Just this past Saturday, Coach Hudspeth and I and our wives were on the field celebrating the, the softball championship. And I happened to mention that, you know, Arizona has roughly a $90 million budget. We beat them twice. The week before, Texas has a $170 million budget. We beat them twice. Well, he's a lot quicker in math than I am, and he was quick to say that's a quarter of a billion dollars, and our 18 million just kicked there. All right, isn't that right, Coach? <laughs> just seven years ago, our athletic budget was a mere nine million dollars, second from the bottom in all Division I football playing institutions. Today, our budget has doubled to 18 million, and I'm very proud of that. I'm proud of that in these lean economic times, we've been able to grow our budget the way we have. Yet we are still in the lower half of our own conference, all right? We need, we need to grow that. We, in order to consistently compete, we're gonna have to continue to grow that budget, and we're gonna ask you for help. The Raging Cajun Athletic Fo Foundation was established in 09. We quickly launched the annual fund, I appreciate Jerry's words because that annual fund is so important to us. It's a, it's a fund of unrestricted dollars that allows us to take and, and take care of some special needs within the department. It helps us grow our budget. Support uh, that first year ranged from $100 to five figures. We raised a little over $400,000. The fund grew to over $1.6 million last year. I'm very happy to report today with seven months remaining in the calendar year, the annual fund has already surpassed 1.4 million on the year. So great job, thank you. <clears throat> you know, the strength of our fans goes hand in hand with the strength of our team. The same way the team's success goes hand in hand with the community's success. Each of us feed off of each other and each of us can reinvest in each other. So what do you get back? You're investing in us. You're doing it right now. What do you get back? I mean, obviously, you get quality entertainment. You have a fun family atmosphere at our games, and it's the excitement of winning. But I think it's more than that, okay? I think a quality athletic program can, can provide a few more things. It's an immediate financial boon from retail sales year-round to game day tailgating and restaurants and hotel sales. So some people receive an immediate impact from that. I think we provide venues to yield even more opportunities to grow the economy and grow the future. We're gonna go over some of those changes that we're coming in our facilities here shortly. And of course, we carry the community's name when we travel and through all the immediate exposure that we get. Our home games generate business for our local economy. They create jobs and they instill pride in our community. Every dollar spent relative to Raging Cajun Athletics is an investment in our community. These dollars circulate through the wallets, turning over many times. A UL study showed that each dollar actually turns over six times. Just yesterday, Lita announced the economic impact of the 2013 football season exceeded $27 million. So we had five games last year. That's about $5.5 million a game. We're gonna have six games this coming year and six games the following year, and with a little luck, seven games in the future. We're putting some more seats in. That number is gonna to continue to grow, and that's a pretty good number to start with. So I'm, I'm really looking forward to that. During the softball regional two weeks ago, over 10,000 fans cheered their teams uh, during the three-day event. And according to the LCVC, it injected an estimated $600,000 in the local economy. We're hosting another regional this week and at the Teague, and just think for a minute. Imagine what the number is gonna be next year when we set an attendance record at the Southern game next fall. So the economic impact will continue to grow. Our venues help build the community in many ways. Besides our, comp uh, our competitions and all of our camps that we host, our facilities are also used for other events such as Mardi Gras, performances, business events, and ceremonies. And we want them to be used to their fullest. We hope that companies will think about our facilities to help them grow their businesses, develop client relations, and attract more industry. That's an important one, this attract more industry. You might recall the Greater Lafayette Chamber of Commerce hosted Oklahoma City Mayor Mick Cornett last year as the keynote speaker at their annual banquet. Mick said something 
key about attracting businesses to his community. He learned a lesson the very hard way. His city, despite attractive tax incentives, had lost a bid to locate a business to his community because another city had a more appealing recreational reputation. Thought that was quite interesting. Just uh, last month, we announced CGI, a Montreal-based IT company, is coming to Lafayette, and they're going to bring 400 jobs to the economy. It's my understanding that there's many more of those being developed right now. An athletic department with its related activities and with its facilities can help seal some of those deals. So it's just another way we can give back. At this point, I'd like to kind of stop for a second and, or change directions, really, not stop. Change directions and talk a little bit about our athletic facilities master plan. All right, obviously we have part of it going on now, and we're going to talk a little bit about what we have coming down in the future. Before we even get going, though, one benefit right away is that all this construction is going to mean more jobs. Just they got to hire somebody to, to build these things, and we got to, like, Jerry said about $115 million worth of growth about to happen. So last fall, Lemoyne Construction was awarded the contract to design and build Tier 1 of a three-tiered master plan. All right, Tier 1 is three projects. All right, the first project uh, currently underway is at Cajun Field where, where we are installing new seats in the south end zone, new restrooms, new concession areas. In just a few weeks, we expect to break ground on our athletic performance center. That's the second project. This is a unique facility that will house a new state-of-the-art weight room and training room for all student-athletes, a new equipment room, team meeting rooms, 150-seat auditorium, as well as offices for our football coach. And then the third project, soon ground will be turned on a soccer track complex remodel that will also include locker rooms, team offices, press box, restrooms, and concessions. Tier 2 will be by far the largest element of the plan. Tier 2 includes a complete renovation of Cajun Field. A massive eight-story tower will be built, which includes a Hall of Fame, a retail bookstore open throughout the week, a dining hall for student-athletes open throughout the week, an athletic administration offices, a state-of-the-art TV and sound studio, a large stadium club level, luxury boxes, and a press box. This building will forever change our department and our football stadium. Cajun Field will now be used every day of the week as opposed to just six times a year. The stadium club, as an example, could potentially be used at least out 300 times a year for banquets and parties and functions like this. All right, that's how we're trying to change things and incorporate our community. Tier 2 also includes a complete renovation of Lampson Park. And it will also have luxury boxes, a club level, a little smaller, obviously, but in included in that. So we have some more opportunities coming in Tier Tier 3 is, uh, includes five standalone projects. Once funded, can be built at any time. So once we get the funding for any one of these fives, it'll be the next thing we do. These projects include the renovation of our current student-athlete academic center, addition to the Colada Tennis Center, a basketball practice facility, a golf practice facility, and the renovation of Earl K. Long Gym. All right, that's a lot of stuff. It's a lot of projects. 115 million, I'm sure, is probably an estimate on the low side. All right, let's be realistic. So why are we doing all this? What's our motivation? Why? Why, why do we do this? Well, selfishly, in the athletic realm, we do it for two reasons. We want to provide the coaches you just met with the, with, with the greatest chance to recruit great athletes and facilities recruit athletes. So that's reason number one. Reason number two, we want to provide our athletes what they need to be successful. If we can do those two things every day, we're going to get better, and we're going to have a lot more of these functions right here. All right, but that's selfishly. That's why we do it on the inside. Probably a more philosophical reason we do it is to market our university and to market our community. I learned a long time ago that the, an, an athletic department really can be the best marketing arm or the best marketing tool of a university. This past season, all 13 of our football games were broadcast live on, on uh, television, with 11 of those 13 being on ESPN. All right, we also had 14 men's basketball games, 15 softball games, and 12 baseball games televised to date. Hopefully we'll have a few more baseball there. Uh, that's 54 contests. ESPN, ESPN2, about 100 million homes. ESPNU, about 72, 74 million homes. And then ESPN3, of course, is the World Wide Web. People around the world get to see the Cajuns. 
There's not a lot of schools out there that can be say they were on they were on television that many times. During these telecasts, it's been given. Yeah, oh, excuse me. It is a given that the broadcasters will talk about our university, talk about the community, and likely our hospitality and our culture. We usually get a laugh when the announcers will try to pronounce words such as lag nappy and edify. <laughs> is that not right? <clears throat> I'd also like to share something Dayton City Commissioner Matt Joseph said about exposure. A recent University of Dayton study showed the team's present in the two presence in the 2014 basketball tournament generated ne nearly $73 million of exposure for the city and the university. That's this past year's basketball tournament, $73 million. He said, and I quote, anything we do now to help get a positive perception of the city adds to all the other things, all the other efforts we are doing. Something like this we could never do ourselves. We couldn't afford $73 million in advertising to make Dayton look good. That was his quote. So he, and they understand what some of the exposure can mean, again, to both the university and the city. Amplify that, the more success our athletic teams have, then the quality and the quantity of our applicants go up. When the applicants go up, enrollment goes up. When enrollment goes up, you have more people buying red and, and, and all those things that we already talked about goes up. So basically, continued success is a circle. Investment leads to quality, quality leads to success, and success leads back to investment. So it's a positive cycle, and it's something that I think we're starting to experience right now. So, last thing. What, 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 are, what are we asking of you and why are we asking it? Very simple question. What do we ask of you and why do we ask? I think we're asking three things. We need you to buy season tickets and attend our games, number one. That's pretty easy to do. Buy tickets, attend our games. Buy season tickets and attend our games. Our goal is to lead the Sunbelt Conference in attendance in all sports. We want our facilities, all of them, to be the toughest place to play in America, Coach. This past weekend, the senior woman administrator from Arizona told me after the game, playing at Lampson Park was incredibly tough. It had to be a huge home field advantage for the Cajuns. If you were there, it was. It was a huge home field advantage, and you were the reason. So number one, buy tickets and come to our games. Number two, invest in the department by donating to the RCAF Annual Fund and supporting future capital projects. Tier two of the facilities master plan, the two big projects, we're going to come and we're going to ask for your support. We need annual fund dollars to help increase our budget. We're going to need capital dollars to build out the master plan. So that's the second thing you could do. And then number three, involve your businesses by becoming a sponsor, an advertiser, a licensee, or a corporate partner. There are many opportunities for businesses, large and small, to partner with us. Our inventory is vast. We have game program ads. We have facility naming rights. We'll tailor a, a sponsorship package to meet your needs. I also encourage businesses, again, large or small, to take advantage of our corporate ticket sales. We have blocks of tickets are available at affordable rates, and companies can use these tickets, A, to reward their, their employees, or perhaps reward, thank their customers, or you can give them out into the community. Every, every game, every football game, I know Coach Husband gets hit, hit up, I get hit up by the boys club or the girls club or the, the big brothers, the big sisters, the all-A honor roll at Edgar Martin High, whatever. And we're not allowed to give away tickets. The state does not allow that. But we can give away an already purchased ticket. So some businesses have been buying blocks of 25 or 50 or 100 tickets and giving them back to us, and then we can distribute those to those charities in your name. So think about buying these reduced price tickets. Again, reward your customers, reward your employees, or perhaps give them back out to, into the community. Y'all, challenge your friends to invest and reinvest in this community. That's basically the last thing, number four. I told you there's only going to be three. I really lied. There's four. Challenge your friends to invest and reinvest in this community. Let's invest in our future. Each person in this room can make a difference. Everybody in this room can make a difference. It's a great day to be a raging Cajun. And what do we say in every staff meeting? You ain't seen nothing yet. Thank you. <laughs>